This old guy DIY video has to do with making a cult packer for use behind an ATV or a compact tractor using 12 inch corrugated pipe from Menards. And then I use some two inch ID rigid PVC. And then my axle is actually going to be one and a half inch pipe. This is just a short piece to check for size. And then I take OSB, these things don't have to bear any load, they're just used to center the axle for the, while well, the concrete is drying. So I cut four pieces that are 11 and a half inches in diameter. I put a two and a half inch hole in the middle. Then I take one, and on the bottom side of the culvert, I leave part of this out around at least three quarters of it. So you have to kind of uh, pry and beat this piece of OSB into place. So that retains the thing. And then when it comes time to fill it, we'll flip it over. Actually, I'll use this one. So this one has the bottom in it. And then I'll take the piece of schedule 40 or schedule 80, whatever you choose to use. And I'll just stand that in the middle. And then I'll mix up some concrete, just uh, with a shovel and a wheelbarrow. And after I get the concrete in place, I'll take the top piece and I'll drop that over the top to center it and then I'll just kind of push that down so it'll hold it in the center and this operation is not going to have an, a uh, bearing pack basically I'm leaving the PVC to be sacrificed as the axle shaft wears it out over the course of its life but you'll see when I finish that I have a one and a half inch piece of water pipe that's going to be my axle effectively and the PVC will serve as a bearing and since it's a low speed operation and I only have a couple acres that I'm working with these things tend to last for years. I built the last one about five years ago and it was still fine when I sold it last summer. So anyway the technique is uh, in this case it's going to be a five foot cult packer and these things get heavy pretty quickly so I cut it into two sections so they're roughly 30 inches a piece and that way when I want to disassemble it and roll it up into a trailer, or another guy and I can pick it up and throw it into a trailer, you don't have to have an implement that has a bucket on it to put it where you want it. So this is the start of the assembly process. I'm going to fill the things up with concrete, and then tomorrow I'll show you how it finishes. And when I prepare to fill them with concrete, I just take the thing with the disc in the bottom, and I set it on a piece of OSB or plywood. Just something so it's off the concrete a little bit or the blacktop and uh, that'll allow some of the water and stuff to run out but tomorrow when it's dry it's real easy for me to just tip the thing off and I'll just hose the blacktop off and everything's good. One other tip when I prepare to fill that with concrete I just put some duct tape over the end of the pipe so as I'm throwing shovels full in there I don't get concrete down in my pipe. So this is what the first one looks like with about 240 pounds of concrete in it. I guess to use four 60 pound bags. And see I have a little bit left there. I'll throw it in the bottom of the other one. Now with this deal, when I was pretty close to being done, I just dumped some extra water on top so it'll work its way through and get anything that I didn't have moist enough. So I just wiped off around the edge here. Now I'm going to take this piece of OSB and I'll center the shaft and then I'll be ready to work on the second one. This is what the first one looks like with the shaft centered and the cap on. Now we'll go to this one. So I'm back working on the Culta Packer today. It's been about three days. I'll let the concrete set up. That's what that looks like. And I decided to use a one and a quarter inch shaft. As you can see there's some slop inside that two inch ID uh, PVC. And what I'm doing is I took a 2x4, I cut this at 24 inches, and at 12 inches I drilled a hole through it that's 1 and 3 quarter inches in diameter, and then I put a quarter 20 carriage bolt on each side, so as I'm pulling on this thing it doesn't have a tendency to break. And what I'm going to do next is uh, put some plywood across the corners here to support that, and then put a tongue on the thing. But with my two pieces, the seam is right here in the middle. So the rollers weigh about 250 pounds a piece, so I can actually move it from this property to other properties where it'll be used. But we're just demonstrating some progress. I'll talk to you later. So I'm continuing to build the frame. 
I have a 48 inch piece of 2x4 that'll be the tongue. I took some pieces of 4x4 and when I put the first one on I screwed through the tongue into the 4x4 and then came here to the back with 3 inch screws and put them in there. And then on the second piece I drilled and then angled 3 inch screws in this way and then put them on from the back. And on the corners I glued and screwed pieces. In my case they were 7.5 by 9 inches so I'll give some, this thing some structure. So when I'm turning, it doesn't want to fight me and break. And as I said before, I put the quarter inch carriage bolts in on the other sides of the three quarter, one and three quarter inch holes so the thing won't crack. Now I built one of these years ago and I sold it when we got rid of the property. Now I've got a place to do food plots again. So I'm making number two. And this is just the base structure before I put on more reinforcement for the tongue. So here's the finished cult packer. I'm hoping if I hold here for a second, YouTube will pick this as a thumbnail for me. But I built this thing with leftover wood. I didn't want to cut any new pieces of plywood or whatever else. So you see for my structure to take out lateral movement, I have this two by four that goes to the left on the top. And this one on the bottom goes to the right. And then I just took a piece of leftover three quarter inch plywood and screwed that here in the middle. And then if we go around the thing, I glued and screwed these supports where the one and a quarter inch pipe comes through. I drilled a quarter inch hole through it and just put that hitch pin in there. I mentioned before that I have these quarter inch carriage bolts in there so it discourages this piece from cracking. And then if we go around it, I built this kind of box frame for it so the thing wouldn't want to twist and break. You can see this side is the same. And I made this thing five feet wide and as I mentioned in the beginning this has two pieces right here is the seam and uh, that will allow me to take it off in two chunks that are about 250 pounds a piece and then up here at the front of the tongue I put another vertical quarter inch carriage bolt to hopefully dissuade this from cracking and I just ran a quarter inch bolt through sideways I have this piece of chain to hook onto the ball of the ATV or the tractor or a truck, whatever I decide to use. But anyway, here's my old guy DIY no weld cultipacker. I'll probably use it for a total of one hour, cultipacking one acre each year. I made one of these things about 10 years ago, and when I sold the property, I got rid of it. So I made another one today, and I thought I would share this video with you guys. So I hope it saves you some time or money, and if so, please subscribe, and have a nice day.